former President Donald Trump was indicted today for trying to overturn his loss to Joe Biden. We have to win in November, or we're not going to have Pennsylvania. They'll change the name. They're going to change the name of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvanians have a unique role with democracy and freedom. We have seen Pennsylvanians rise up at the ballot box. The work of making this world resemble one that you would prefer to live in is a lunch pail job. While it may be true that yard sides do not vote, they do matter, especially in this election, and especially in ways we may not quite understand yet. Hi, welcome to the Keystone Reckoning Podcast. It is Tuesday, October 8th, 2024. We are exactly five weeks away from the 2024 election, so things are starting to get real. And as we start to look at making a plan to vote, some of us have already voted. I actually got my ballot yesterday, and of course, I would encourage everyone who can to vote by mail for a lot of different reasons that we'll get into. But the, the thing I want to talk about today has to do with yard signs. And as anybody that's ever worked on a campaign on this, you know, the staff or volunteer side knows, yard signs are a blessing and a curse, but more like 90% curse, 10% blessing, because they disproportionately suck up the time and energy of a campaign because people tend to think they're the end all be all of an election. And it can be really frustrating to those of us that are, you know, who spent weeks and months, uh, you know, in some cases, a, a year working towards election day, doing all of the groundwork, doing all of the hard work. And everybody just kind of rolls in two weeks out and says, okay, give me a yard sign. I've done what I need to do. And oh, I guess it's almost election day. Uh, it's, it can get really, really frustrating. And especially when there's always that person or a couple of people on a campaign that are just so yard sign obsessed that, you know, oh my goodness, so-and-so has a, a sign for our opponent in their yard, so we need to go put 15 up in a neighbor's yard. Or, you know, we you know, there's some on that road and we don't have as many or we don't have whatever. And, and the worst part is when that when that person is the candidate, uh, and I get it, there's a psychological component because you see your opponent's name all over the place and you don't see yours and that freaks you out. So you tend to uh, get very uh, defensive and, and, you know, you're going out there yourself and putting signs up at two in the morning instead of sleeping. So you can do the things you need to do during the day. I will be honest. I maybe have been a little guilty of that in the past. And I, but I can tell you from being on the management side, it, it, it is absolutely maddening to watch a candidate go down that road. However, Yard signs aren't going anywhere. It's just a mainstay of American politics. Fine. They are what they are. And the general thought is, you know, yard signs don't vote. That's the, the axiom that gets passed through campaigns as a way to kind of talk those people off the ledge that are obsessed with yard signs. But there is definitely a psychological component to it. And to me, it's always been yard signs in public places don't matter. Yard signs in people's yards do matter because it's a tacit endorsement of the candidate that someone is willing to make. Yes, I'll put a sign in my yard. That's saying I am letting the world know and my neighbors know, the people that see me every day, that I am supporting you. And as a former candidate and elected official, that's a pretty cool feeling. You know, you go, you talk, knock at someone's door, you talk to them. They didn't know you or didn't know much about you when you knocked. And by the time you're done, they're like, yeah, I'll take a sign. That's a good feeling. That tells you you're doing something right as a candidate. So that's all great. And again, having those signs in yards is a wonderful way because it's also going to be a conversation starter. Hey, I see you have a sign for so-and-so in your yard. Yeah, you know, they came and talked to me and uh, I, you know, I, I like what they had to say. Oh, yeah, they left a piece of literature on my door, but I missed them. Oh, he's, he's a good guy. She's a good, good woman. Yeah, cool. All right, I'll vote for him. You know, and that typically tends to happen more with your down ballot races where, people don't necessarily know as much about the candidates. Now, obviously, the further up the food chain you go, the more people tend to know. So then why do signs matter for the presidential election? I would put out there that, as we've discussed and everybody's talking about, this is a unique election in American political history. I think history will come back and tell us later exactly how unique it was. And God, I hope it was unique because we can't do this every four years. I, I, I know I can this is exhausting and, and mind numbing. So it, it's it's definitely unlike any election we've ever seen in modern American political history. And one of the big things to me is I'm looking now almost past the election. Let's say I'm looking past it. But in terms of what is a win 
right? How do we get make sure that Kamala Harris actually takes the oath of office on January 20th, 2025? Yeah. Winning of the election is one thing, but getting there and doing everything uh, the right way to, to get what we need is something entirely different. So one of the big components of that is voter intimidation. And we're going to talk more about this in the coming weeks because I really do believe in looking at all of this, we are heading for a situation where the Republicans are not going to concede even if they lose. There is ample evidence of it. It's everywhere. Uh, and, and most importantly to me and most alarmingly to me, it's coming from states and elected officials where they actually have the power to mess things up and make things very difficult. Again, discussion for another day, but it's, it's really becoming to me kind of the, the filter that I'm looking at this election through as we head into the home stretch. So the thing about that is, is that this is why yard sites matter, because a lot of the right wingers. I believe, are emboldened by the fact that they think everybody agrees with them because nobody challenges them. And I mean, it's exhausting to challenge a Trumper because, you know, it's like spitting into the wind. There's just for most of these people, there's just nothing that can be said to get them off of the insanity they believe. It's a cult. I'm sorry. It's a cult. You people are in an effing cult, plain and simple. You might not see it, but you know how many people that are in a cult know they're in a cult? None. That's why it's a cult. There's a difference between a club and a cult. You're in a cult. Anyhow, so we are inclined to not engage with them in a lot of ways because it's exhausting, because we don't want the pushback. There's also that mentality of, okay, they're going to do what they're going to do. Instead of worrying about them, we need to focus on what we need to do, and that's go out and knock on doors and do the things we need to, need to do to win elections. You know, nobody's ever won an election on Facebook. I, I say that all the time. And that's all true. All of that is true. But there's also another piece of this, which is if someone on your street has Trump signs up and there are no Harris signs and there is nobody out there pushing back, it furthers their belief that they are right and everybody agrees with them, even though they won't say it. When in reality, a lot of people are just rolling their eyes at them. And the reason I bring all this up and the, the, the impetus behind this entire podcast is that this was a discussion that was had in my house, in my family. We live in a townhouse development. We rent, we don't own, and you know we are subject to HOA rules. And one of the HOA rules that they've made very clear is that you cannot have campaign signs out until 21 days before the election. And you're allowed to have one sign. As someone who's familiar with the law, I don't believe any of that. I've had numerous instances where, you know, it's been litigated and you can see that the First Amendment right to self-expression is fairly clear. And where this has been litigated, it generally says that you can put up signs when you want at your discretion, with the only exception to me that makes any sense being a sign that would be so big, for example, as to block traffic or create a safety hazard. But if I want to put a thousand Trump signs in my yard and it's not bothering anybody and I own my property, I have a really hard time arguing with that from a, a First Amendment point of view. OK, but in this HOA, which is notorious, <laughs> apparently for a lot of reasons at different parts of the development, uh, you're not allowed to have like, window clings in some places and all sorts of craziness. So we have these rules about political signs from our HOA. They are what they are. The question inside our house became, do we put up a Harris Wall sign in our yard? Our yard is right by the community mailboxes for our street. It's not a cul-de-sac, but it's kind of a turnaround. And we've had good relationships with our neighbors over the years, never had any problems. It's a nice little area. And we've, we've been there for five years. And we really enjoy everything about it. And it prompted this discussion about whether or not we should put up a sign and whether and why or why not. I respect the fact that my politics can be not for everybody in terms of how I feel about things and my, my lived experiences. I go out of my way as someone who has been political my entire life and have worked in politics in various capacities, I go out of my way to not take my politics to anybody for the most part. 
I, I, I know that may seem counter to what a lot of people might expect, but to me, anybody that knows me knows how I feel and what I'm about and where you know, my expertise and things lies. And if they want to talk to me about it, I'm more than happy to have that discussion, whether they agree with me or not. I'm one of those people I can disagree without being disagreeable. Yeah, I'm going to try to persuade you, but I know what my limits are and I know how the, the psychology of how this works. And I'm not going to get into a screaming match over something that's pointless. So I tend to not put my politics out there kind of aggressively in people's face. And especially being mindful of having moved to a new community on you know 200 some miles from where we used to live five years ago, it's not the same thing. I've enjoyed to some extent this anonymity, uh, especially politically, and you know being just kind of suburban dad at home, and then doing my politics where I do my politics. There's also the concern that you know my wife voice, and she's not wrong by the way. I want to make it clear I'm not having a a spousal argument on a podcast. Uh, my wife's politics very closely follow mine in terms of issues and passion, and which is one of the things I love about her. And we had this discussion, though, about what happens if we put that sign up in our yard. And we talked about it a little bit, and we put a pin in it, and I actually intend to revisit it shortly with her. And I, we have a few days because before our 21-day sign period starts. So I wanted to really think it through. And in thinking it through, I thought, boy, this might be a discussion. Other people having yada, yada, yada. Here we are on a podcast. So here are my thoughts. And this is the argument that I plan to make as to why it is important in this election, especially to put up a yard sign if you have the ability to do so. First of all, it is super important to me, as I alluded to earlier, to let people know that there are other people in your community, on your street, that have political beliefs that probably align with yours. This is a huge problem in areas where it is perceived to be a very Republican area. And you would be out knocking on doors, and obviously you, you have voter data in front of you, and you're knocking on doors, and someone would say, oh yes, I support you, I'm a Democrat, which we would know from looking at their... Uh, looking at their voter information and they'd say, I'm a Democrat, but I don't put a sign up or I don't do anything because I know I'm the only Democrat in, in this neighborhood. I'm the only one on my street. And I would say, well, actually, no, that's not true. I'm, I'm looking at this information right now. And there, you know, of these 15 houses, there are seven other Democrats and the voter. And I wouldn't necessarily say who they are, but the voter would be like, what? No, that can't be accurate. I'm like, no, I just talked to three of your neighbors and, and and they, you know, they all tend to think the same thing because there's this kind of isolation that goes on where you think you're the only one. So you keep that to yourself and you don't reach out and make those connections. It's why it's hard in a lot of places that are emerging from like red to blue, like here in Cumberland County, where I live, it's hard to really build a political infrastructure through local committees, county parties, things like that, because everybody is gets in their mind this conventional wisdom that they live in in a red, uh, a red area, and speaking out is is kind of pointless, and it's just not true. And the only way to really build an organization and build momentum in you know at the ground level is for people to step out and say, no, that's I, I'm a Democrat. This is what I believe. These are the people I support. And then that helps bring other people out of their shell and it starts to make those connections. So for that reason, those things are important, especially in more local elections, because it allows people to, again, inform about candidates and have those kind of conversations. This presidential election is obviously different. But to me, it is important to let people know that, yes, I do support Kamala Harris and Tim Walz and other Democrats on the ballot, because that then allows for those conversations to take place. It lets people, I think, know what our values are, frankly. You know, we saw this a lot during COVID, and I see it a lot more now in terms of the way I look at the world, which is if you're an anti-vaxxer, that kind of forever changes the way I look at you. If you are a hardcore Trump supporter, and this is a hard thing to say because it, it gets personal, right? But if you are a hardcore Trump supporter, after all of this, it changes the way I look at you. And I'm sorry, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to unsee it because we have reached such an extreme point 
in our politics that if you can look at all of this and if you have kids, if you have daughters and be okay with it, be okay with this being the kind of world that you want your kids to grow up in or your grandkids or anybody, that means you're maybe not the person I thought you were or you've become somebody I didn't think you were. And that's tough. That's a really tough place to be. And it took me a long time to get there. And I'm still not 100% there, but it's getting harder and harder to, to think any other way. And I'm sure they probably think that about me, but sorry, I've got facts on my side. I, I'm not in a cult. And this is, I, this is not a whataboutism, both sides are equal. It's just a difference of perspective. No, this isn't that. This is something totally different. So to me, putting that sign out is a value statement. This is who I am. This is what I believe. Good, bad, ugly. And I don't mind letting people know that. I'm not ashamed of what I believe. Because one thing the Trumpers are not, they are not ashamed, right? They are shameless. So to me, that is an important value statement. Just like when someone puts a Trump sign up and this happened, there was somebody in our neighborhood that we didn't know all that well. They put a Trump sign up early. They were forced to take it down by the HOA, but I couldn't unsee it. And when I walk the dog and I walk past their house and that, that person is out there with their dog, I don't want to engage with them because it tells me something about them. And maybe that's, maybe that's closed minded on my part. I don't know, but I have to be honest with myself, right? So the other part of that is, is to me, if the inverse, I guess, being true, if you see a sign in my yard saying I support a candidate and you were going to use that as a way to judge me or to say something to me. And I think that's the fear, right? That you, you just want to get out and go to your car and take the kids to their sports and walk the dog. You don't want anybody to ever say something to you about, you know, challenge you politically. If you're like, to me, I don't mind, but I get why, you know, my wife wouldn't want that. I get why people wouldn't want that because again, the, the Trumpers are aggressive. And this kind of goes back to the big, the bigger picture. They're very aggressive and you just don't want that. So I get it. And to me, if you're going to be that kind of a person, I kind of want to know that in advance because then that way I know to steer clear of you from the beginning. And again, it is what it is. So it's a value statement both ways. It's a way of not being afraid to let people know how you feel because this gets to now the big picture. I talked about voter intimidation. This election is not going to be over on November 5th. This election is quite frankly just going to be getting started on November 5th. And if you look at the rhetoric, and just yesterday, I think it was, Trump made a statement, it was over the weekend, Trump made a statement that if you put a Kamala Harris and Tim Wall sign in your, in your yard, you could get hurt. Like, that's not a, oh, yeah, well, both sides. No, he actually said that. Like, the Republican candidate for president said, if you have a sign for my opponent in your yard, bad things could happen to you. You could get hurt. And so for anybody that, that comes back with, oh, Democrats and political rhetoric are getting people hurt and we have to tone it down, uh, bullshit. That's the rhetoric. And that's coming exactly from the top. You can't explain it away. You know, and there were a lot of other things, you know, Elon Musk saying, well, why has anybody tried to kill Kamala Harris? And, you know, they, they say these things and then, like, laugh them off. But the problem is, when those things get said, the guy at the end of the street with the Trump sign up, who doesn't see any Harris signs up, who thinks that they have that reinforcement that they are right, unequivocally, and no one's challenging them on it. So they get bolder and bolder as they go. As we start to get post-election and all of these conflicts are going to arise of various you know, legal and, and, and other kinds. And, and I say that in a way where it, it sounds insane to even say it out loud as someone who has a political science degree, a law degree, and has spent his entire life working in law, government, and politics to say that this could easily become violent in ways beyond January 6th. It, it could, and I think it might. And I hope I'm wrong. I pray I'm wrong. But it's almost hard to see in some ways how it doesn't and that you have all of these people that are just all in on being told right up front that if they, if they lose, they were cheated. It was rigged and they are right. And everybody's out to get them. 
They're trying to steal their election. They're trying to take away their freedom and all the things that, you know, that they love to say. That, that is a call to action to those people. And the desperation is so obvious from Trump because the stakes for him are so much higher than they were four years ago that it, it really is starting to feel like instead of a call to action, it's becoming a call to arms. And they view it that way. It doesn't take much to see how people view this stuff. So being a, I think that one of the important things is I think that a lot of these, these Republicans, you know, from the top down and locally, I think they're using this period. And I'm not saying it's even knowingly, but I think psychologically they're trying to figure out the boundaries here, right? Like if there's, if none of their neighbors are standing up for the other side, then the then nobody's standing up for the other side. And it's all the deep state and it's all George Soros and all the insanity. But if they see a neighbor, someone they know and see every day, and they see they're supporting another candidate, maybe it gives them a little bit of pause. Maybe instead of being a keyboard warrior and promoting all this hate and disinformation and misinformation and sowing a lot of this, these problems that are are kind of reaching a boiling point by all these different little pieces. If we could find a way to kind of temper that and put a face on some of it, I think there could actually be a tangible benefit here. So for that reason alone, I think it's important. I'd rather have an uncomfortable discussion now than a much more uncomfortable confrontation after November 5th. Do I think one will prevent the other? Uh, probably not, but I don't know. Can't hurt to try. Finally, and to me, maybe this is the easiest argument to make, but it's a little more of the, the as my kids would say, the big brain argument, is this election, at the end of the day, is about our rights. Now, everybody can perceive those a different way and protecting our rights and protecting the country that we have or that we want to live in and what that looks like going forward. And to me, the First Amendment the Constitution is a fundamental right. And I think it's, I know that it is so often miscited, misunderstood by people who just want it to be what they want it to be. Uh, they think it gives them the right to say or do anything with no consequences. And that's not what the First Amendment says. It says the government shall pass no law infringing on those things. Big difference. But to me, if you look at there's freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and then there's that other one, which is the freedom of expression which is an offshoot of those it means you're allowed to express the things you believe in voice in action. And if the whole point of this election is about standing up for those freedoms to protect those freedoms, the things that we value, then we cannot be afraid to exercise those freedoms and those values in order to preserve them. Let me put it another way. The architects of our democracy or our democratic republic gave us a set of rights and freedoms, which was a precious gift that was at the time unique in the world. They gave us the right, and I would say the responsibility to speak up and defend the things we value. And I don't know, I kind of think this is the kind of thing they had in mind when they did it. This has been the Keystone Reckoning Podcast. Thank you for listening. We'll be back again soon. I'm trying to do these every day, but there's a lot, of, a lot going on here before the election. Please, if you want to contribute to what we're doing, visit keystonereckoning.com. You can make a contribution there. Also, please visit our sponsor, truebluegear.com. Get that last minute election swag going, t-shirts, hats, all that good stuff. Again, truebluegear.com. Well, that's it then. And we've saved people the trouble of voting. What's next? Our, our point is that it's... I understood the point. We're going to South Carolina to set up Illinois. When I ask what's next, it means I'm ready to move on to other things. So... What's next? We're done. Fantastic.